Hello there, outliers. Niyama Shang here, and thank you so much for letting me be a part of your journey. I, I say letting me, but I'm actually excited for, for you to let us be a part because today I get to play with an amazing outlier by the name of Scott Griffin. Scott, it is an absolute pleasure to be in space with you, to be in conversation with you, and just to, like to be in your presence. It's good to see you today. Oh, you know what? I've been so excited for our visit today. I love what you do. You know what I've learned? I've learned that we often do things in life through others' invitations. Mm -hmm. And hearing other outliers share their stories of their dreams and what they're up to doing, I think it inspires people to dream themselves. It's hard sometimes to dream the dream that you didn't first vision. And hearing stories from others are a great way to make visions, to make up the dreams. I, you know, I really appreciate that you start off here with this, like the word invitation. And, and what we're going to do is in a bit, I'm going to have you like introduce yourself. Let us get to get some context for you. But I, I, I want to call that in right away uh, because I have found that, you know, we, we're lots of people who think differently, do things differently and, and consistently push the envelope in terms of what we believe is possible. Right. And what like, and you use the word invitation, that word sits really strongly with me, whereas a lot of times I've wondered, you know, are my dreams worth pursuing? Will people think that I'm that I'm a dreamer without the ability to bring it to reality, so on and so forth, right? And the power of invitations and giving people an invitation to come and participate really like ends up being something meaningful for me. So I'm glad you brought that in right off the bat. Anything you want to say to that really quickly and then we'll let outliers well, know yeah, a little bit more about Yeah, you're you saying it fabulously. Don't do life alone. Yeah. Meet beautiful people. You know what I've learned? We become more of who we are by those we surround ourselves. That's why I choose to live in Los Angeles. This is the city of dreamers. Hollywood is the heartbeat of LA. And you know what I've learned? This city rewards those that are willing to dig deeply in the spirit of creativity. Here in Hollywood, I mean, Peter Pan really flies because mm. he believes he could. Mm. And that's somebody's thought, somebody's dream. And they wrote it out as a story. And all of a sudden... It happens. And I think you can take that thought into almost any dream that one can whip up. And I here's what I've learned. I've learned we're not necessarily responsible for how. I think those that focus on want correctly, the how is often already there. But it's the opportunities we're able to see now all of a sudden because the want is front of mind. It's hard to see the opportunity that was always there to have the want fulfilled. And it happens in so many ways. Look at I'm getting goose pimples. <laughs> and it's because it just works that way. The how is often unlocked through want's focus. All right. So I want to like, I want to unpack that. You'll find that that's my style here, Scott. Uh, but before we do that, let's give outliers a bit of like a context for you. Right. Um, so I've experienced you as both like great energy, uh, great, like, I, I feel as though you are, I can't describe it. I feel like it's almost like either you're a magnet or you're able to magnetize things. Like you're able to like magnetize dreams and pull them toward like people. Like that's what I feel. Right. I see, I see some knot in it. <laughs> yes. Uh, so that's my experience of you so far. And I want to give outliers a chance to get a chance to, to see you because what, 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 what I get is going to happen is that they're going to get your energy. They're going to hear, they're going to hear your message. And then, and then they're not going to know like who you have what been. What it means or how you can do it. Like yeah. here's something super fun if I can. Yeah. Here's what I've learned. We often will want, I, I, when I have one activated, of course I want it now. But it doesn't always come in the right nows. It might happen in the later event and is often totally different. And so here I am. It was 2008. I'll never forget the era in the time. I'm a mortgage broker by trade for most of my adult career. And our industry had shut down. And being in Los Angeles, a lot of my client base was in entertainment. And I was visiting with some because they had a lot of questions. Boy, the next thing I know... Her name is Cynthia, producer at Warner Brothers, says, Scott, we'd love to produce a show. You'd be an amazing host. It'll all be about the financial climate we're in, and we want you to speak the way you do. Help people to get through this moment through a different interpretation. They, we flew out to Florida. 
I froze. I wanted it so bad because I needed to find something to get joy reactivated. There was a meltdown of, of everything I understood. And here's this red carpet through backdoor invitation to go into the world of Hollywood to be on a TV show. Well, I showed up to, to, to Florida, was so much happy on that airplane. Okay, it was Monday morning. And uh, well, that's when I sat with the camera and that's about all I did. I sat mm. with the camera. No words were available. Nothing was coming out of my mouth. Um, they switched to a camcorder. We're going back 15 years. And, and the camcorder didn't make it any easier than the larger camera was. And I flew home Tuesday. Was not successful. I don't believe in failures. There are no real failures in life. It's just experiences. And how can you fail if you're having an experience? They don't all feel good. That one sure didn't. I was wickedly embarrassed. I had this whole story in my mind of what I was going to become. Well, I get this email on Tuesday when I get home and Cynthia shares with me. She goes, Scott, I'm not surprised. You've always been a mortgage broker. You've never been in front of a camera and I just need you to be Scott. You're too much in your mind. I recommend, Scott, that you go to an acting course. They'll teach you to get out of your mind so you can be the TV host I need you to become. I'm not worried that Monday didn't work. I recommend this class. So I went on the Google. Wednesday morning, I found a course in New York City starting on Monday. It was a 30-day boot camp for actors. And they were going to film the show in New York. I'm like, how fabulous. Okay, let me put a little color in this moment. I had by now, I had five houses. I felt like a superhero in industry. I had an office on Sunset Boulevard, 9,000 West Sunset, eighth floor, living the life that I never thought I could have. And so much time of repeating that lifestyle. I even had a business manager paying my bills. I didn't even manage my own bills. I was living this fantasy. And um, then my world shifted. And I learned I really wasn't. And kryptonite really exists in life. And, and that the bigger you are, the harder you could fall in. Because in this time, I had lost three of the houses through foreclosure. I, I, I had one last asset because I was on chemotherapy the year before the market shut down. So for me, it was a storm that kept compounding over and over. So I was looking for light. I was in a depressed version of myself at this moment, emotionally, physically going through stuff. My industry, it was just compounded really significant. I was down to $18,000. I sold my car. And now I had 18 grand. And here's this invitation to be a TV host and go to New York for acting class. What I need to do is go get a job. Well, that's not what I did. Instead, I went and found that acting course. I called, there was no seats left in the class. I went to go audit the class in LA. It was Friday morning. And Cynthia said, Scott, they have a campus in LA. Go see if you like it before you go and invest so much money and go take on this journey. I went, I'm driving from my Palm Springs house because I, I lived back in Palm Springs and in LA. I had several houses and I'm, and I'm driving and I, I get on the 101 freeway and I tell myself, what are these kids not going to like the class? Of course, they're going to like the class. That's why they're taking the class. And then I tell myself, I don't even really care if I don't, they don't like the, I'm going to like the class because I want to be the TV host. I literally bought a one-way ticket to the, to New York City on the freeway, I'm not yet at the LA campus. I had just got on to from the 10 to the 101. I pick up my cell phone, bought a one-way ticket for a Saturday arrival. The class that I wanted to be a part of had no open seats. I hadn't had an open seat until October and we were in August. And I wanted that September class mm -hmm. and there was, it was full. And so I didn't care, I bought a ticket. I had nowhere to stay. I have two dogs. My house is in the middle of a foreclosure. Um, and here's Scott Griffin buying a ticket to a class he's not part of. Of course, I loved it. I get back. I call that school. Matt is his name. I'll never forget it. By the time I was done with that conversation, I had a seat in the class on Monday in Soho. And I had a friend that I didn't know was away for two weeks and gave me his bedroom. And so that guy that watched my house from Toastmasters uh, just the week before said he'd watch my house for a month. 
and all of the how to do it came together. And all I wanted was to be a successful television host, but I had no money. I had two pets with no pet sitter. I had nowhere to stay in New York. What the hell am I doing in New York and how will I afford life there? And all of these how questions often stop us in life. So we don't often take the uncomfortable next step because how will it feel? How much will it cost? How will they like me? How will I like it? How, how, how is a road blocker? Want is an, it's a doer. And I wanted to be in that class Monday. Well, here's what I learned. You can't learn a new craft in 30 days. I wasn't any better for the camera 30 days later. But I took on an action. And I ended up getting a two-year scholarship to one of the, the best acting schools, the acting studios with Jane Price. I got on to 30 Rock by a weird journey. And, um, and then I flew back home. And I decided I didn't want to be an actor. I was there for, in New York for a whole year. Let me let me pause you there, Scott, because uh, I'm hearing uh, there's a lot in this story that I want to unpack. There, there really is. I yeah, just yeah. wanted to show you the impossible can happen even in life's darkest moments, even when you don't have the tools that prove you should be doing it. It doesn't mean you shouldn't try. And if it doesn't work, it wasn't a failure. It was awesomely delicious. I was re-energized. I found a new adult version of self. New York was stimulating. Sitting in my robe in Palm Springs was the opposite of stimulation. I needed what took place, but I was no I wasn't an actor. It didn't work for that. This, this is this is not, this is something really interesting because like I'm now living in, in Southern California myself. I used to live in New York. Uh and so when so when you're saying like 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 I am now actively trying to energize myself. I'm like, I, like it's, it's a different energy. It's a different energy, and it's good living in both areas. They're just different living. Totally. Uh, so let me let me come in here because I think I think like the story that you just you just set out here is. Uh, thank you, firstly for 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 being real about it and for and for for bringing it out here. Um, you really got me when you're like you're like all right, I'm on the freeway. I'm about to go on at this class, and if I'm getting you right, you're like. But for what? I know what it is that I want. This is not going to change what I want. And I know where it is that I want to do it. Regardless of if they want, they're ready to have me. I know I'm ready to be there. And so you just made the move. Am I getting that right there? hundred percent. And I did it in two days. Yeah. I got back on Tuesday. I was in New York on Saturday. Yeah. What I love that. The I, two day, I love the two days part too, right? Because there's a component of this where it's like, it's like, there are a lot of things that do take time to build, right? You were talking about like you had the multiple houses, you were like sitting at the top of your industry, so on and so forth. That uh, I'm assuming that took that took time for it you. Definitely to Definitely took that. time and a yeah. whole bunch of I hope so. Yeah, yeah, and and at the same time, concurrent with that, there's some other decisions that you can make, and you you still talk about time. So I I don't want to I don't want to shorten it too much, but there's some other decisions that you can make where you're like, and then I made it like what I'm here for is I made a choice. No. I, I feel like you made a declaration. You made a commitment to to something, and like I'm hearing you when we when we when we left when we left off the story. You're like, I flew back to the I flew, I flew back, uh, and I was like, I'm not an actor, but there was still like like you live fully in that commitment. Oh you yes, know? oh uh, yes. I, so tell take take me there, right? Oh so yes. Like like I feel this year. Like, but here's I, the I, cool part. Here's the real cool part. Here's how we tied the rainbow together. Okay. So, so, so I, I got a lot of understanding in those event windows. I came back. I volunteered a life uh, for a year giving back. I grew up in foster care and boys' homes. So it was really heartfelt for me to give back to the community I grew up through. So I was given the opportunity. I took it. And when I came back 30 Rock, that I was just on an episode, called me to come back on again. And I said, no, and thank you. And who does that? Well, I did. And then I ended up going back to mortgages. And I ended up becoming a state leader for California. I became the president of our whole state's lending association. And then I got invited to go to Congress and speak on housing reform. And I started becoming significant in industry at a bolder level, but through the voice of the others that didn't have the power to bring their voice out to support our industry that was going through the biggest crisis in modern history. And somehow Scott Griffin got invited to go up there and play part in reform. And I learned that a voice had power when you use it. I learned a lot of things on the journey when I wasn't acting from the time I took those acting courses. It still wasn't there yet. Do you know when it showed up? Here's the cool part. Here's how we tie it together. Yeah. 
four years ago, three and a half years ago, I get a phone call from American Dream TV, Ignite Media. They're producing a television show first of its kind to air on CNBC. And it was all about real estate, lifestyle, and culture. And almost all of these type of great television shows that are produced are done through the eyes of a realtor. It had never been produced through the eyes of a lender. And this show was going to be bold and it was gonna premiere on CNBC. They were interviewing so much talent because this is L.A. One of the five cities that was selected to be a voice on the first season was Los Angeles, all the major cities. And uh, well, they found me on the journey and I went into the casting call process. And then you know what happened? I'm, I'm, I'm interested. What happened? Oh, it was real bad. I love my morning walks. It was, I'll never forget the time. Here I was with my little coffee, walking across the crosswalk, 8.15 on that particular morning. And I got run over by an automobile. Oh, I'm and, um, and I'm like, son of a gun. Um, I had all of this dream about being in this new show. We're going to be on CNBC. All these new dreams were activated. And I saw myself for the first time ready to be available for the invitation. Years had passed since the school time on my side. I felt like I'd be available. The crash suggested that I wouldn't. But you know what happened instead? This is a message for everybody hearing us. Please. Beautiful lives inside of the ugly. Ugly lives inside of the beautiful. Life is on which one you're going to focus on. They're both present in every moment we're living. That's what I've learned on my life's journey. And I've learned that the more you focus on the things you like about something you're experiencing, the more that becomes available. Growing up, the teacher used the red pen to say what was wrong, not the green one, which was right. Programming as a child is often developed. I was programmed differently. I grew up differently. But, but allow me. The very next morning, I was in massive pain and I, my whole face was chewed up. My, I've got, you can't really see it, but scarred. My, this is an all new wrist. It's not mine. Um, well, it's mine now. Um, it got crushed. And so I was on the internet that morning, very next morning, on my pain pills, of course, but they don't really shut the pain down, but I bet they did something. But they got me bold enough to take my morning coffee and get on Facebook and you can find it now. And I said, I love you. Thank you so much, beautiful friends, for your, your I love you messages, your support messages, the chocolates, the flowers. It's overwhelming how powerful an automobile can crush the body, but it didn't crush my soul. My inner spirit is fully activated as if no car hit it, but my body is super chewy. But the good news is, is that I didn't run over both hands. I can hold my phone and speak to you now. And that was basically my love you message. The network saw that. And they said, if that's somebody that just got run over by an automobile, we found our television host. And I became the first host for Ignite Media on CNBC, had never done it before, no script, got the number one agent in all of Keller Williams to be my guest because she inspired me in 1997. And I thought, what a great way to say thank you. My first episode, let me bring you on. You touched me at a very neat space in life when I was making a life change and I never told you thank you. Why don't you come on to my first episode so I can say thank you? And she did and we did and it was a lot of fun. Well, <laughs> not only did I get picked up on CNBC, that's what happens on the other side of uncomfortable. Well, Bloomberg TV picked up the show. Well, then Fox Business, this is all everywhere that we get cable, global, everywhere that tunes into anything that's airing. That was Scott Griffin. And then there I was on ABC Networks. And all of a sudden, I'm filling all of these shows, and I have never done any of this in the befores. And, and it's just proof that, yes, you can. If you didn't do it just the day before yesterday, well, that's what, what happened to that day before yesterday. Today's the new moment to play with a new want. And here's what else I found. Want activated is powerful. Try not to shut want off. People try to say, just be grateful for what you have. No, keep, well, sure, but get want reactivated. Want helps me to wake up in the morning and walk for several hours. 
want helps me to, to, well, look at this. I'm getting an email notice right here. Do you know what that's telling me? Guess who's going to be on HGTV this Sunday, June 16th? Well, I am. I've never been on HGTV. I'm heading there Sunday. Guess what else? My segment is a two-part segment. A portion of it aired on social. It got 1.2 million views in 23 hours. It was all about gay pride. It's Pride Month here in June. And then, and then it went and got number three ranking on social in the world for hashtag pride. Who does that? Well, crazy dreamers in life that think they could, even though they didn't do before. And of course it was uncomfortable and I'm nervous and sweating underneath, but you do it anyway. And that energy that tickles you, well, that's the one that motivates you to get up there and people can feel that. It's just harnessing that energy I discovered. And I think a lot of us get camera shy, get very nervous to speak in public, and I think that if we just realize when we're speaking to others, if we speak from our heart, if we speak from self, all the words are already available. I think that words get chewy and hard to find when we lose self in the story we're trying to share through others. And I think the stories we share should be designed to help them, not just to show well, whoever we are off in life. I think the more we give to others, the more they want to be around us and they give back. And, and I discovered the warm, fuzzy feelings I get the more I share. I'm learning inside of the sharing. And I think that's because you're taking those yesterdays like we're doing right now. And, and we're talking about a car running over. We're talking about all of these weird things, dark moments that led to bright, bright lights. And I think everybody, and that's the gift. You know, Okay, one last thing. Keep it the, coming, Scott. Keep it the, coming. <laughs> the gift of dark moments. Here's what I've learned. The darker the moment, the more strength it has to interrupt normal. I think the magic of life, the magic happens when normal's interrupted. Normal is where comfortable lives and we often stay there more than we should. I think we stay in the comfortable because uncomfortable is not easy. And so if given a choice, most of us take here. But I, here's what I've learned. By stepping over to this part over here, wow, well, that's where HGTV is. That's where 1.2 million social views. That's where all of these other things in life, invitations to speak to Congress. Three speaking points are laws we use in industry today. Well, who's speaking points? Well, mine. Why? Because I was there. And that's what happens when you show up and you dream and you believe. And if I could go back in my life and tell my youthful self one thing, and I only had three words or two words to give, here's what my two words would be. Just believe. Scott, I think I think that takes us to where where we need to be for today. I feel uh, I feel amazing right now. Uh, I I do. I really I really feel amazing. I like so. Uh, if anyone's just listening to the audio, I'm just sitting here smiling. Uh, I am grateful for you. I'm grateful that our that our paths have started to to connect, and I'm looking forward to uh, just not only what you have created, but what is coming next. Like I believe in you, and like you help me believe in me in, the, in new levels. Like as you're talking, my dreams are 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 continuing to take shape. Uh, and it's funny because I'm like, I'm actively looking around and saying, oh, where's there a dark spot right now? Or or a part that feels ugly. And I'm like, but where's the beauty in it? You know, let me, and where is something that's really beautiful where I'm focusing on the ugly right now? Yeah. My so. gosh, that's the it. That's what I love to do in the mornings. On the walks, I look to find ugly. And then I try to find the pretty inside of the ugly. And when you can, shoot. It's like going to the gym and the biceps get developed, the chest formed when you repeat the exercises through a regimen. You know what I've learned? You can do that also just in self-thought and life happens and all the words that show up in the energy levels we live in life is self-thought that shapes everything we interpret. And so working on self-thought, I think for all of us, is how you get the impossible to become real. 
I mean, here I am back with multiple houses again. I live on top of Mulholland. I was able to keep one house, got a gorgeous house in the desert. I'm married now with the best relationship for 10 years I've been in. And I, stuff that's happened that for me growing up, the way I did in those boys' homes all alone where my my actual family dumped me off at age eight, so rejection, full of anger and upset. And I lived through that story through most of my early adult life. And it was a it was a real upset moment. It was a breakup I had when I was 29 and it, I didn't want it. And it was my actions that stimulated it. And that was the turning point. And I hit one, a real dark point in life. And that's when I started the exercise of appreciation. And the exercise of appreciation will turn a spirit around. And I've learned that the deeper I was willing to go in the appreciation I was focusing on, it was like driving on Sunset Boulevard to my 9,000 building. And I was driving, I made a right turn and the traffic was so thick and I thought, God, I hate this traffic. And it was that day. I literally, that day I said to myself, no, Stop using the word hate. I don't hate the traffic. The traffic's present because there's people here. An abundance of people are here. And I love LA because of that. And if the people weren't here, the traffic wouldn't be here. And I'd miss the people that I love. By the way, who invented tar? How long did it take them to find the recipe to build this tar? And then who laid down the roads? Were they married? What kind of life were they living that allowed them to lay down the road when this was just trees and nothing else? And who designed the map? And why are we going this way? And the deeper I would go into life, I would go super deep. The more available, I could quickly find something to like. And that's where joyful energy is built throughout the day. It's exercising on things we appreciate. And if we go and exercise and stop in our day and actually do it, wow. And I don't even think it'll take 30 days. You'll start getting different reactions. And I words are things. Hate, never, always. It's not true. Life is full of choices and options. So I found that words were meaningful and that people reacted to the words we use. So I started focusing on language. And when I would hear myself use words like never and always and hate, I would correct it instantly. And if I heard it in somebody else, I would correct them. Why? Because it allowed me to focus on languaging and the power of words, the power of appreciation, the power of words, the power of self-belief and dreaming are the recipes to unlock a silly life that you have the right to have. And it can be as silly as you want it to be. I'm constantly coloring new stories out and why not? Of course you can. God, I am deeply appreciative of you. Thank you for living the life that you live. And thank you for bringing it to us here. Uh, thank you for keeping it like the simple things really front, front of heart. And, and like, and it's been a painful journey in many different ways. Uh, and, but like, like I see how you keep bringing the joy in and how you live that. It just like, it exudes through you. And so uh, I want to thank you here as we wrap up for today. Uh, just thank you for being you. Thank you for continuing to bring it. If anyone is interested in uh, going further down down the journey with you, watching anything you've been on, like continuing, continuing from there, what's the best way for them to go and do that? You know what I love? Things that are easy. Yes. Scott Griffin's my name. And wouldn't you know, that's my .com, scottgriffin.com. And if you go on social, all you do is go backslash believe boulder. You'll find me. Why? Because I believe life should be bold and we should think boldly. And so there, I, I, I live in that. So Scott Griffin or hashtag back. I don't even know. Is, is it hashtag? Is it backslash? <laughs> it's believe bolder though. And because uh, that's exactly how I feel. We get to live the life we want to have. Wow. Well, thank you so much, Scott. I appreciate you. And, and outliers, let's, let's continue down this journey here. All right. Oh, absolutely. And I love your focus. Outliers are the ones doing the life they want to live. They That's are the it. dreamers. That's the game. That's the game that we get to play. Thanks again, Scott. It. You're so beautiful. Thanks for inviting this, this moment. It's great to know you. Mm.